Welcome back to Technobabble. I'm finally revisiting the Scuf Instinct Pro after the controller comparison video I made a little while back. The Scuf isn't the sort of thing I would actually buy. I tend to focus on budget and functionality and trying to keep the products I do buy working and useful for as long as possible. So once again, I want to say thanks to Swift Logic, who also provided some of the footage for this video. Also, just to note, the following thoughts are my own first impressions about the controller. I played around with a lot of controllers that Swift loaned me for about two weeks, so nothing incredibly in depth or anything like that. Anyway, enough rambling, on with my thoughts. Aesthetically, I love the looks of this controller and the ergonomics are amazing. I've been a fan of the offset stick design since my GameCube days, but what I mean specifically here is about the customizable paddle switches on the back of the grips. My hands and fingers fall right to where a slight press forward or backwards would activate either of the two extra buttons, but that comes at a cost as the main issue I had with the scuff while playing games, in particular while playing Halo Infinite, was that I kept hitting the paddles on accident, causing myself to swap weapons while not meaning to. I like this layout for the paddles the best, but that is a pretty massive downside. Of course, you could map the paddles to anything or nothing, and I have a tendency to tighten my grip on the controller when I get into tense situations, but it could be an issue for anyone else who doesn't have the muscle memory for the paddles. You never know if you're going to grip tighter on the controller or not, until you do and have to get accustomed to it. The toggle on the triggers is also the best of controllers I've tested in my opinion, just because they have what are colloquially called mouse clicks, and they provide the most definitive and assuring click with a practically instant response time. Well, as fast as the controller sends a signal out anyway. Watch my comparison video for more information on that. I think they're the best because of the hardware aspect. While some controllers of the test have software that determines the depth of pull required for trigger activation, I don't find that preferable. Software settings tend to make the triggers feel mushy, so the definitive click is incredibly nice and satisfying. Sadly, no teardown in this video. I didn't dare to take this controller apart. It was difficult enough to open the Elite Pro 2 controller and I don't think the Scuffed Instinct would have been any easier just based off the similar design and how it looks and I'm not about to scuff up my friend's $200 scuff controller. That said, I'm not entirely convinced they aren't using an Xbox Series controller as a base because the Xbox registers the scuff as an Xbox made controller. It may also update the same as an Xbox controller, but I didn't try that either because once again, the controller's not mine. And tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm fairly sure that Scuff started as a company that did custom to order controllers. And I assume that now they've grown large enough to make runs of controllers, but they're still performing their workloads around just modding Xbox controllers. And that's why this still reads as an Xbox controller on the Xbox. The Scuff Instinct Pro also does not have rechargeable batteries and for around $230 once you include shipping and that sort of thing, it's kind of insane. I also understand that it makes some sense the controller itself will never have a lifespan determined by a battery pack, but for this price I don't think it would have hurt them to include a removable and rechargeable battery pack. As with any controller, the scuff also stands a chance of having stick drift, the same as any controller that uses potentiometers instead of Hall Effect sensors. And to my understanding, Hall Effect sensors are patented by Gully Kit. So eventually for some people, this controller will turn into $200 e-waste once the warranty runs out or if you're just not willing or able to repair it yourself. And believe me, if you're on any kind of a budget, you don't want to know what it's like to have an overly expensive paperweight. Looking at you, Microsoft Zoom. <clears throat> Anyway, this really isn't the sort of controller I would have personally ever bought, and I don't think testing or first impressions have changed my mind. It's very cool, and if you know it's something you'd like to have, the build quality and aesthetics are incredibly nice. Just, you know, that this controller isn't that special beyond having mouse click triggers, paddles on the back, and an absurd price tag. That's my thoughts. Thanks for watching, and thanks to Swift Logic again for letting me take a look at these controllers. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and all that. And this has been Valhalla's Demise. I hope to catch you in the next Techno Babble.